So the next topic that we're going to take up for discussion is binomial option pricing. So let's get started. Now, so far we had been talking about options and, um, and, and if I were to just go back to the discussion that we had on options, in most of the problems, the price of the options were given to us. Now we would know that options most of the options, they are traded in the market. Of course, our options could be OTC or exchange traded derivative. And in case if these are exchange traded uh, options, the market itself would discover the price of those options. But I think uh, uh, we, we need to know the logic that goes behind option valuation. So even if uh, an option trader comes up with an option price, on what basis does he go about setting up or quoting a price for the option? How would you figure out what should be the fair price of the option? And the term, when and, and when I use the term option price, uh, that could as very well be uh, used interchangeably with the term option premium. So let there be no confusion. Don't confuse strike price of the option with the option price. When we use the term option price, that's equivalent to option premium, that's equivalent to option value. All right, one would like to believe that if the option is getting priced correctly, uh, then the option value would be equal to option price. So what are we talking about? Here we will take up the binomial approach, the binomial approach to the valuation of options. We would see how to go about valuing options with the help of the binomial approach. Uh, I believe uh, this approach is going to be discussed in greater detail once you progress to level 2 of CFA. But then here you would get initiated to it and uh, at a very basic level you need to be familiar with this approach. So since it's a binomial approach, uh, the assumptions would be that uh, time moves in discrete increments. We all know that uh, binomial by itself is a discrete distribution. So we would have periods over which we would allow the underlying asset prices to move up and to move down. All right, so we are in the course of setting up scenarios. So uh, let's say for example, uh, let's say for example, if I take the stock price to be 100 and over the next one year, if I argue that it could either go up to 125 or come down to 80, then this one period is being taken as a, as, 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 as a discrete unit of time. All right. And so when we would try to value an option where the underlying is this particular stock, uh, based on the binomial approach, uh, over one period, then it would be it would be termed as the one-step binomial model. Okay, or one period or one-step binomial model. So under the given model, the current strike price, uh, the current price of the asset would be allowed to move up or to move down. And uh, normally I would allude this to up state and this to be the down state. All right, so let's see. So the one period bi binomial model, if I were just to continue my example, uh, let's say where our, where we have a stock which could either go up to 125 or could come down to $80. So both are quoted in dollars. So this is a stock and uh, over one period. And I'm interested in valuing a call of with the underlying is this stock and the strike price is 100. All right, I want to know the value of this call. This is unknown to me and this is what I would want to figure out. Now we've taken the strike price to be 100. It could, be, it could have been something else. So let's see how the call value would evolve or what the call value would be a period down the line. So this is a call with an expiry of one period. So if this is one period, let's say one year, then my call as well has an expiry of one year. So that means at this point of time, under these two scenarios, the call would be reaching its expiry value. So what could be the, uh, what 
would be the payoff of the call on the day of expiry now under the upstate so this situation was being termed as the upstate where the stock price is 125 uh, the call value should be 25 because it has a strike price of 100 the stock price is well in excess of the strike price and one would say hey it's deep in the money call and the intrinsic value of this call is going to be 25 in case if the stock value is 80 which is well below the strike price what shall be the value of the call try and recall well you would argue that it should be 100 because the call is out of money one would not excise the call it would go worthless and hence the value of the call is going to be 100 uh, it's going to be zero all right so under the up state the value of the call would be zero under the down state the value of the call is going to be zero uh, under the up state I, I stand corrected under the up state the value of the call is going to be 25 under down state the value of the call is going to be zero okay so so far uh, it seems well within our understanding now I am interested in knowing the value of the call today so how would we go about so I'm going to keep it very limited uh, in terms of what I discuss but I think uh, uh, at, at, at this level that should be sufficient enough now what I would do is take up the risk neutral approach and uh, by way of this I essentially mean that I would look at an investor who would be um, indifferent to risk and hence uh, the cash flows that the investor would face going forward he would value them today by discounting it at the risk-free rate so I repeat we are going to take the risk neutral approach which would mean uh, an investor who's going to be risk neutral and which would mean that the risky cash flows that the risky cash flows as well would get discounted at the risk-free rate so in case if I were to look at 125.18 now these are two scenarios uh, which the stock going forward could assume and please remember these are exclusive scenarios all right so if this happens this would not and if this happens this would not so these are a set of exclusive and exhaustive scenarios now I can figure out what should be the uh, probability of the upside and the probability of the downside uh, let's say the risk-free rate has been given as eight percent. So let's say the risk-free rate has been given as eight percent, and I would, I would, I would take it to be discrete rate. So uh, under the risk-neutral uh, valuation approach, uh, we would, uh, we would argue that one twenty-five into p plus eighty into one minus p. So this is the probability of the up state. So one minus p becomes the probability of the down state. So one twenty five p plus eighty into one minus p would, if discounted by the risk free rate, give us hundred. All right. Now you can for once object to the fact that uh, here we are trying to discount the cash flows of the stock based on its realized price or the expected realized price and uh, and 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 then we should ideally be discounting it at the risk adjusted rate let's say we would uh, f uh, try to incorporate the beta of the stock into the CAPM model get the required return on equity required return on equity and that should be the appropriate discount rate but um, uh, recall what I had said a couple of minutes back which was that I will take a risk neutral approach so here we are talking about an investor who's risk neutral who's indifferent to risk and hence the so-called risky cash flows as well are getting discounted with the risk-free rate now when we do this and let's let's try and work it out so this would give me 125 P plus 80 minus 80 P divided by 1 plus risk-free rate is 1.08 is equal to 100 so let's solve this this basically gives me 45 P is equal to 28 then P is equal to 28 by 45 all right so this is what P would be so 1 minus P as well I can figure it out so that's going to be I believe 17 by 45 yeah Now these probabilities are not the natural probabilities. These are not the probabilities of the stock going up to 125 
or let's say 17 by 45 is not the probability of stock going down to 80. These probabilities that we've arrived at are known as risk neutral probabilities and they could be different from the natural probabilities. But uh, uh, keeping my, my discussion quite limited, uh, let, me, let me stop here saying that these risk neutral probabilities are very effective in finding out the valuation of the call. Now, we got P as 28 by 45, so I might want to take 28 by 45 as the probability of the upstate and 17 by 45 as the probability of the downstate. Now, let me just go ahead and value the call. So it's going to be 25 into 28 by 45 plus 0 into 17 by 45. All right. And this will be, since this is what uh, would be um, applicable one year down the line, so f for me to find out the present value, I discounted with the risk-free rate. All right, which is 1.08. Okay, so I might very well use that figure 1.08 over here to arrive at the value of the call. Okay, so let's get this. So taking this to be 1.08 and uh, I multiply 25 by into 28 by 45, which is nearly 62%. I get the value of call to be 14.4. So the value of the call turns out to be 14.4. 14 14 so that becomes the uh, that becomes the fair value of the call. Now you might be wondering uh, why not take the cash flows of the call and if I would have known the natural probabilities, I could have very well extended natural probabilities to 25 and 0, multiplied it to get the expected value of the call, and then discounted with the risk-adjusted rate, whatever is applicable. Now, the challenge is in finding out the risk-adjusted rate applicable for a call. Please remember that. So, uh, depending upon where the call is, how is it placed? So, if a call is deep in the money, it would have a risk which is going to be very, very similar to that of the stock. And when it is deeply out of the money, it would have a risk very, very different from the stock. So, the volatility that it would exhibit in terms of call price when it is deep out of the money uh, is, is, is going to be much less. So, uh, there is no one single risk adjusted rate which could be extended to the call. So depending upon the time period left, depending upon the moneyness of the call, that is the extent to which it is deep in the money or in the money or out of the money, the kind of discount rate that would get extended would be different. So rather than trying to uh, get those multiple rates or approximations of it, of, of those, we might as well use a risk neutral approach, which is quite effective and quite convenient. So it gives me the value of the call to be $14.4. So let's look at another example and I think that should give us sufficient practice. Pluto's stock is currently trading at $40. Calculate the value of an add the money call option on the stock given that the stock can either go up by 60% or could come down by 37.5% over the next period, the risk-free rate equals 6%. So let us see. So let me draw that. Uh, the stock is currently trading at $40. It could go up by 60%. So 60% of 40 is 24. So that makes it 64. Or it could come down by 37.5%. So the reduced price is going to be 